Ironically, the heavens have opened, just as Adam and Jamie find the perfect place to whip up a storm. So here we are, Jamie. In Alameda Naval Base. Yeah, across the bay from San Francisco, you know, they used to paint C-130 planes in this room. It's a big hangar. Yeah. Time to see whether or not Adam's rain delivery system is just a pipe dream. One hundred and fifty feet of pipe with sprinkler heads every six feet. I'm actually really pleased with the way things are going. We've got half up already. I'm going to do the other half right now. And I got plenty of high points. It looks really stable. And uh, as long as uh, Jamie holds up on his end, we shouldn't be here too long. Jamie's working on getting water for the challenge. Not as easy as you might think on a rainy day. It's legal to tie into these fire hydrants, but you have to go through the fire department and you buy or, or rent a, uh, a meter that allows you to tie into it and keep track of your water usage. Accessing water is one thing. Getting it to travel 60 feet straight up in the air is another. There you go. Jamie's calculated that the water will have to be pumped at 15 pounds per square inch. No problem for this pump. It can move H2O at a rate of 200 gallons per minute at 50 pounds per square inch. While they're setting up, let's see how Adam's getting on. That might be enough, but you know what? I don't think so. Guess that means he's finished the rain rig. With the pipes in place and the water pumping, the Mythbusters are keen to give the rain a dry run. Come on, come on, keep coming down. No, no, it's OK, it's OK, not too much. OK, so what's next, what's next? Well, we have to mark out a course, and uh, it's 100 feet long, so we're going to mark it out with tape. We need to get another roll and attach it to this so we can make it to the other piece okay. of tape. Is that 100 feet? Are we too long? Just a hair. On some of the tests, they plan to add wind as a variable. You know, I'm not, I'm not getting this at all. It's like, okay. you don't want one starting at the end line, or at the start line? No, no. Here, come over here. I'll draw it out for you, what I'm thinking. Probably here, blowing like this, or going like Looks this. like they can't blowing agree on a fan plan. We want to get it, uh, the fans as close to the course as we can anyway. Not necessarily. To... Consistency is more important than the highest wind speed. Let's set it up my way first. OK. <laughs> of course I want to set it up my way first. Do you want to set it up your way first? I don't yes, care, actually, yes. Adam. <laughs> For this experiment, they're looking to duplicate average rainfall, between two and three inches per hour. Digital gauges are set out along the course. Oh, these are fabulous. It's almost like whoever invented these didn't want to get wet when they were measuring the rain. We're going to run it for five minutes. I can't tell how big the drops are. So currently, we're getting just about one and three quarter inches per hour. We want to goose up the throttle just a little bit, and uh, we should have the perfect amount of rain. I'm ready to uh, dress up. You ready? Ready as I'm going to be. <laughs> I must admit, I feel a little funky. <laughs> Step one, make the rain more visible. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Step two, put on the coveralls. Each pair weighs 757 grams. Step three, it's time to walk the line and find an answer to this age-old mystery. Walking. Our high-speed camera, running at 1,000 frames per second, captures every single droplet. Adam and Jamie will walk the course twice, once with wind, once without. 
And stop. Each take is timed. Then the coveralls are okay. straight off and onto the scales. 785 grams. What was the original weight? 757. 757. Cool. So uh, 18 grams of water. And the results faithfully recorded. Now, Jamie's turn to be under the weather. Both walks clock in at around 18 seconds, and the coveralls have soaked up almost the same amount of water. But what happens when Adam and Jamie up the pace? That can't be right. 7.98, uh, significantly more. Adam's coveralls are 14 grams heavier after the run. Time to find out what our meteorologists gauged from their rain experiment. It's much better to run than, than walk, according to our model and the experiment. The, the runner was 40% less wet than the walker. On Jamie's run, the difference isn't as great. 793. But the raw data is still pointing to an answer that flies in the face of science. The results aren't what I expected at all, actually. The numbers are really close. We're only talking about a matter of a dozen grams here and there. So when we average it all out, I think it's going to show that running, actually, you get wetter, strangely. The difference is minute. Wind-blown rain makes the coveralls only a few grams heavier. The overall result, however, remains the same. At the end of the day, eight pink-tinged coveralls tell the story. After the running, the rubber suits, the getting wet, crunching the numbers, what's the final result? What's the verdict? Better to walk than run. You really? Can, yeah. It, uh, it was very clear. Over a 100-foot course with two to three inches per hour rain delivery, uh, we got more than twice the rain per foot uh, running than we did with walking. Is this one busted? This one's busted. Fact is that it's better to walk than to run in the rain. 